Afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. If you're here for the first time, my name is Ryan Lathan, and I'm the Manager of Marketing and Communications at Fort Worth Opera. Uh, we are over the moon, excited to have to be hosting globally renowned soprano Jennifer Rally this summer for a series of masterclasses with many a surprise guest popping up each week, including today's special guest, David Lomeli, uh, Director yes. of Artistic Administration. Yay! Yes. Director, <laughs> Director of Artistic Administration with the Dallas Opera and casting consultant for Munich's Bayerische Staatsoper. Uh, super grateful to have you here, David. Uh, congratulations to Sarah Kennedy, Andres Cascante, Anne Wright, hi Anne, uh, Molly Dunn, and Fatu Suese. I think I'm looking forward to hearing all of you today. Uh, please feel free to turn on your video so that Jennifer and, and David can see your smiling faces, but make sure that your mics are muted so it doesn't distract from the fellow, your fellow observers and our singers. And if you have any questions for us, just Type them in the little chat box on the right. And yeah, so all right, on with the masterclass. Fabulous. And I hand it over to you, uh, Jennifer. And Thank you. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us this week. I am so excited to have my friend and colleague, David, here to share this masterclass on casting from both sides of the table. So just David, David, thank you so much for being here. We are thrilled to have you. And I think this is gonna be a very unique experience for our singers and our observers. Um, I wanted to have David because David is a wonderful tenor. We sang together, do, do we date ourselves? <laughs> we sang together back in the day, very long yeah. time ago, like a decade ago. Uh, Don Giovanni, we did Don Ottavio and Don Anna together. It was my first Don Anna. And he's an amazing, fantastic tenor. And he has become also a, a very big, big guy, big name in the world of casting. He is casting for the Dallas Opera. He also has a new post at the Bayerische Staatsoper in Munich. And I am just thrilled to have your expertise with us. So thank you. I basically want to talk for a little bit before we get started with our amazing singers about the myths of the casting table. We as singers, we stand in front, you get to sit behind, and amazingly, you now have gotten to do both. Yeah. And so what I'd love to know about is, what is your experience from going from one side of the table to the other side of the table? Do you look at the situation differently now? Are there things that you know now that you didn't know as a singer that you would love for people to know just to ease their minds when they stand in front of you or any other casting director? I would love to know how you feel from both sides of the table. Yeah, well, thank you first to 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 Fogel Opera and to to you, Jenny, and and, and everybody to tune in to to the class of amazing group and and, and thank you again to to come in and uh, and for the invite. Uh, you know, I think that that one of the the, the main myths is that at the end of the day, when I sit there in the in an audition panel with my colleagues, we all want to find great singing, right? So we are actually just by principle in a way cheering for you yes so we want that the next person and the next person is an incredible voice because it becomes a resource for artistic planning right yes. so uh, i think that that one of the things is that you shouldn't read the face of the person that is there because at the end of the day no we are not only there to to enjoy your gorgeous voice and the emotion that is there we are trying to, at the same time that we're hearing you, to find a business decision that, that, that can be accommodated to help your career and our artistic goals, right? So I, I, sometimes I, I, there's amazing auditions and performances that, that are the ones that for me sometimes punch you in the gut where, where you actually forget about that. But that's yeah. not the, the default mode, you know? Suddenly, you know, like where I remember actually uh, six years ago, uh, Jen was singing in a, in a private kind of work session for, for my boss and myself. And she just came and had an incredible time. And then she opened her mouth and she's in Tosca. And we just turned immediately and it was like, 
and now next year she will be with us singing Tosca. Oh so, my God, I can't believe you said that. <laughs> I love it. You know, it's it's uh, sometimes those those things happen, you know, but they are but they are rare. But uh, I think that that one of the things that I always worried as a singer is like, what are they going to think about so many things? You yes. know. Like, yeah. And, and I think at the end of the day, you have to to worry about uh, about yourself and your process. Because if you're well prepared, if you feel like a million bucks in your outfit, if you feel a million bucks in your pre in your in your diction or preparation, your arias, your mental health, your everything, then if if you pr if all those things are checked, you probably are going to give a great audition, and then it's up for the that that is the part that you cannot control, you know. Exactly. Uh, there's also one one thing that I I think that we are not. We're not saying sometimes when you go into an audition and, and, and especially when you're starting the business, you're, you're going for general information audition just to get to know the person, right? Mm -hmm. So if, that, if that's the case, not always you're going to get out with an offer. Yes. Um, because as you know, there's sometimes you, you book a session uh, as an audition uh, auditor for let's say 30 singers but you really are searching six spots in very specific operas mm -hmm. so suddenly you know like i i have heard incredible wagnerian singing in the past six years but but in dallas we have done like two operas right. now a lot of the people that i have heard now in munich that i have you know 12 wagnerian strauss operas a season yep now i can use a lot of those notes so you never know Right. Exactly. So at the end of the day, just focus on controlling your microcosmos. Everything else is out of control. So why worry? Amazing. That's amazing advice, David. Thank you. I know every singer worries about that. We stand in front of the table and we go, what are they thinking? Do they like me? What is their reaction? And you honestly cannot judge the reaction. And I think that's very important for every single person on the class today to understand. You go and you present who you are and what you do best and what they think behind the table is not in your control. You present what you do, who you are, what you think about the character, about the music, whatever. What they think you have no control over. So I love that you said that. Thank you. When you are listening to, for example, a YAP audition, for a young artist program position at Dallas or even mm -hmm. in the studio in Munich. Mm -hmm. What do you like for a YAP audition package to have? For example, the five arias. What do you like for those five arias to tell you as about that person? And if you want that person in a studio for a year or two years to work with? What do you want in a specifically a young artist audition package? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm a little controversial in this one. You know, I, I'm not the norm. <laughs> I, I am not the norm. I, I, I find that, that there's the general sense of having, you know, like different languages and, and in America, everybody wants to have an English piece mm -hmm. um, that, you know, like if I, I can tell if you speak English in, in just in the three conversations, with, like the <laughs> cow, you know, like that. So uh, I personally want to have five areas that independently of the order that you're going to do, that independently of the day of the month, of the year, of the season that you are, that, they, that you have mastered those auditions to a certain level of production independently of the crisis that is happening in your life that day. Because we want to know how you why, how you perform on clutch. That's very important. At the end of the day, if you're auditioning for a YAP, we know that maybe one high note is going to be a little open. Mm -hmm. Maybe your passage is not perfectly centered. Maybe your diction is not right there. Or maybe there's going to be a little rhythms there. But I want to see originality. I want to see potential. I want to see desire, passion, moving energy, and, and a flow of honesty. Don't try to please at the end of the day you know like the people pleaser get into a certain per a, a certain era at the end of the day the artist that is true to themselves and the way that they want to sing are the artists that actually succeed in the career because yes. it's in day in and day out every day they have to take 
millions of micro decisions that make that career happen. And it's because they are true to that, that core value, because if that core value is sacrificed, the art is not honest. And then the career, there's always something is that, that we casting directors, we cannot say, but we can say like, there's something uh, right. that is not happening. So in my package, I, I would say, you know, I, I would appreciate at least maybe two languages. Mm -hmm. You know, in my case, I'm not that ambitious, just two. But I, a diversity of, of maybe two or three areas that tell us where you're comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so we know what is our baseline to bring you up there. Right. So, exactly. you know, I, when, I, when I auditioned for, for, those, for those programs, uh, it, was, it was different in every, in every, in every time. But I, but I did with, with my manager at the time. My manager was Matthew Epstein, a Columbia artist. I, we built a package that it was... Faust, I was a you know lyric tenor, so Faust, Rodolfo, uh, Nemorino, Lucia, and Rosen Cavalier. So if you see, there was four okay. Italians Languages, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and one and uh, and one French, and and I think I did okay. You know, I, you I did got amazing. Into, you know, I think, I think important to point out is your five pieces, the five pieces that David listed. Those are, and I think people get hung up on this. Those are five contrasting arias. They aren't five different languages. That's not what makes them contrasting. Excellent. What makes them contrasting is that he has a bel canto. He has Puccini. He has, he has the Strauss. He's got different types of musicality in those five arias. He doesn't need five languages. We don't need a Russian, a German, a French, an Italian, and an English. We don't need it. If yeah. you don't sing Russian, don't put it in your package. I would never walk into an audition and sing Tatiana, even though I would love to sing Tatiana. I'm not doing it because I don't do Russian. It's not a thing. <laughs> I can't. I would have such a hard time singing Tatiana. It wouldn't even be worth the fee for me. So you have to think about. No, really. Do you know how much coaching I'd have to do to do that? Ah! Right. So you have to think about for David in his package and in his life as a lyric tenor. He knew himself so well that he said, "These are my five pieces, and they are contrasting." And so when you step into a Yap audition. We don't have to think anymore about, I must have five languages, that's what makes them contrasting. No, it's not. And David, can you please debunk this myth as well, that you must have a Mozart? I, I'm not, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I, no. To be honest, I, I, I think that actually when I start seeing other like lists where they say like, I need to have a, a certain century reflected, a baroque something like that and all of those things it i i am sorry for i'm going to say but it screams that they have never been in the pros yes. when they put that list yes. because in the pros you buy the person that is specialized on that and then once they prove themselves in their specialty like javier camarena had to live for years just yes. singing rossini yes. when he really wanted to sing don and maybe Puccini, maybe something something heavier right Absolutely. but it, you have to create a consistency of technique connection with your public and developing your yourself as an artist when and then after maybe you can go into other places so if there's already people way better than you at doing that uh why expose yourself in a professional situation that can affect your income later Absolutely. just business decisions and it's not every voice is made to sing mozart and yeah. handle and uh, oh, Monteverdi, we're not made. We're not all made to do that. There are specific voices that are. I mean, Renee Fleming sang Mozart beautifully. So if Renee came into an audition and sang five Mozarts, I would have been like, oh, bliss, right? But we don't need to. You don't have to have it if it's not you. Don't put it there, right? Also, another one I'd love to talk about is mm -hmm. if you don't like something if your teacher gave you something and you don't like it my opinion don't put it on the list you must love everything on that list do you agree david i i think so you know and 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 i i'm gonna tell you like uh, my own experience that 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 specific decision changed my life and it's why i'm here um, when I was uh, about to to compete in Opera Alley in 2006, my original uh, package had uh, 
my, my teacher said, you know, you should, you should have um, Pourquoi me réveiller by Berthe as your French. And, uh, and I think that you should sing uh, Macbeth, uh, mm. that tenor aria. And I said, and, and so we started training and my, 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 four, my four competition package was Werther, uh, was, was uh, uh, Alla Paterna Mano. It was uh, the Strauss di Rigori Armato and Lucia, right? Uh, besides the Spanish pieces that I needed the competition, but I didn't feel that the Italian and the French were like, were, were showing what I wanted to show in competition. Um, I, so I, I actually went uh, to a meeting with, 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 with Placido and the, and the teacher that I, that I have, Cesar Yo, and I said, you know, can I just sing these two pieces uh, uh, for you? I just, I just learned them and I, well, not, not a, one of them I already knew, but I, I think that they are better for me for the competition. So I sang Kijelia Manina and I sang Le Cid from Massenet. Mm -hmm. I actually sang Le Cid de Massenet in the finals and I won. When you won. Exactly. So because, because he was speaking, speaking to me, like I felt I can actually say I something. something. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. So you have to be yourself. Unfortunately, in, in this profession, the more original, the more unique, the more truth about who you are to your soul, the better artist you are. Absolutely. So just to transition from the YAP audition into the mm -hmm. main stage audition, when mm -hmm. you, and you talked a little bit already about a general audition, mm -hmm. what kind of a list do you like to see when you have never met someone before and you want to know exactly who that singer is? What kind of a list do you like to see? I think that I, I, I want to see a, a the repertoire that you can sing professionally. If you're if you're right now then arriving for a real job interview, right? Mm -hmm. So then I need to see you in, in in your professional setting. So let's try not to debut a part for an institution unless that is a prearranged thing that they are like, hey Jennifer, we would would you be open to have a workshop session with a manual to try for the first time Brunhilde? Yes. Exactly. Then it's an agreeing part that we, we, we have agreed that it's going to be a first show and, and, and we are all aware of that, right? Yeah. But if it's the first time that, I, that we are meeting you, you have to have things that you have sang above 150 times. Yes. You know, constantly. Something and, that's so comfortable that the nerves will not affect the vocalism, not affect your technique, not affect your interpretation, nothing. Something yeah. you've sung over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. It, that, that starter aria that we all talk about this, the starter aria, it's so important. It's yeah. not a new aria every week. It's not a new aria every single time you go to an audition. It's yeah. the one aria you do the whole season. Yeah. And then the rest of them, yes, they're not as done, they're not done as often. But if I'm going into an audition, and I still do auditions over in Europe plenty, if I'm going into an audition, I'm singing something that even if I'm like shaking for who I'm singing for, that aria is coming out. No problem. I got it. The muscle memory is there. I know it's going to come out every day. We're good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That starter aria is so important. And what David is saying that you've done it 150 times, just because you coached it and did a voice lesson on it, it's not done. Yeah. It's never done. <laughs> yeah. The roles also, they're never done. Even if you sang Violetta eight times in Colorado, I don't care. You're not done learning Violetta. The next time you do it, you're going to have to do it again. You're going to have to rework it with your new set of circumstances. Same thing with your audition arias. You have to keep working them. You have to sing them on the days where you don't feel good. Yeah. You have to go to your lesson on the day when you have a cold. And you have to sing through those arias because when you cancel auditions because you have a cold, the chance of you rescheduling that audition before a year from then is very, very, very small. Yeah. Yes. So if you cancel an audition and say, oh, could I get in tomorrow? More than likely the answer is no, because the company has has scheduled every single time. And I'll tell you what, if somebody cancels, I'm going to get a Starbucks. <laughs> I'm taking a break because yeah. David, I mean, how many if you go to New York, and you do, a, if, if you go to New York and you're hearing, for example, when I sang, on the day that I sang five years ago, 
How many people did you hear that day? 40. 40. And how many days were you in New York to hear singers? Five. Five. So that's 200 singers. If one person cancels, I'm taking the 10 minutes. <laughs> right yeah, now. yeah. I, I would also say, you know, concise information. Yes. When you're in audition, do not put the Bible of people that you know, the 17 <laughs> roles you cover in high school, the Wizard <laughs> of Oz center stage, you know, booking that you yes. had. Yes. Like, I don't like, I, I prefer to have, you know, like 150 words of things and a list of three that it's money. That is, the information tells me who you are, who are you associated with, with it, in, in a minute I can assess where you are in your career. Yeah. And then in the area, I can also judge, okay, it's a, she is a 27 year old soprano lyric, like she just finished her master's, she's in this transition. So these, these areas are representing her employability today. Exactly. You know, so again, it's, it's, it's try to think that every single time and again, I'm controversial in this aspect, but I have walked the walk. Yes. You know, I knew that I was paying my bills from that, from that business transaction, that I was, that I had retirement money, that all these things that, 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 that are real life decisions. So treat yourself as a business salesman that day. You know, you have to give the best information. Imagine the other way around. When somebody arrives to you to sell you something and they have these like, 17,000 pages of information. Would you buy that product? No, you don't even read it. You don't exactly. have to buy it. Exactly. How much of the resume do you actually look at when somebody puts it in front of you? How much of the resume prior to them starting to sing? Do you look at the whole thing or do you scan the first couple in a section and then move on? You, you give, you know, I, I, I think that you, you're arriving into a groove eventually, you know, when I am in, in, a, in a full season and now with the various that super numbers, that number is pushing way, way higher. But mm -hmm. on, on average, I'm hearing a, a, about a, a thousand singers per season. Amazing. So, so that's, you know, like basically my attention span and it's, it's, I try to give my all to, to do this. Maybe it's five minutes per person. So yeah. if that, if that is, that is going to happen, it, you have that is your your elevator pitch yeah. so actually if you are not investing in in concise information in attractive presenting of your information not happening it's over. Yeah. yeah totally and on that note amazing let's mm -hmm. have some singers present themselves in the Perfect. best way absolutely possible we have got five incredible voices for you guys today um, we're going to have them introduce themselves. We're going to have them give the age because the age sort of matters where they're going in their career and David can sort of give them more of an idea of, yeah, you're going to start transitioning into the main stage stuff. So, you know, we want to look this way. So the age is super important. They're going to sing a piece and then we're going to talk from there and see what we can do to help. Okay. So we're going to start with Miss Sarah. Sarah, are you there? Hi. Yes. Fabulous. I'm going to switch over to active speaker. All right, sweetheart. Oh, all right. Pushing my chair out of the way here. My nice setup. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Kennedy. I am 28 years old, and I'll be singing Raniava Nel Silencio from Lucia di Lammermoor. Thank you. Thank you. 
Brava. David, I'm going to let you field this first from the casting side of the table, and then we'll talk from the singing side of the table. That sound good? Ryan, can you unmute David? There it is. There you go. Got him. Okay. Oh. Hi. Uh, thank you, Sarah. You know, great, great work, and, and, and it, you know, it's a very, very challenging area. Uh, area. Uh, I, I think that from from the from my perspective, you know, I think that you you got the the sense of the character. I I would like to have a little more specificity on 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 your connection with the text. You know, sure. sometimes there's general ideas, there's general beats that you're finding, but but you know, I I would just try to get a little bit more concise with with the way you know if, if you're sad if you're if you're Pazza at some moment, if you are, this is a very difficult acting role. So you have to be very, very precise. The moment that you're general, then you're, you're, not, you're not getting ahead, you know? One of the things that I also would say for a, for a professional audition, uh, and this is again, very, very controversial. I, I would try to also to plan my physicality of the role in an audition. And it's very hard because in, you know, when you're directed, you get, where do you place your mom, your minds and everything? But but it's but it's very good to sing in uh, with a plan of where are you doing? You know traditionally, and that's where the business is going to more organic singing, physicality in the stage. No one speaks like this, right? No one no one speaks like this, right? Like it's so watch out a little bit of those hands, like especially I, the more and more I have worked now in in Europe, the directors are fierce. And they have way more more influence in who gets to be on the stage than maybe in the stage that is still is primarily just on the talent of the boys, right? But you want to be a, a, a marketable artist in both, you know, in both markets. And I think organic singing is going to be a, a part that is going to help everybody on that way. Just quite, I'm sure that Jen is going to uh, say a lot of things. I would also, from my perspective, Every single time that you went to your real high, high top, you punched it. And mm -hmm. when I'm buying talent, I want to like find dynamic flexibility in every single part of your range. That's why it's also important to audition in, in situations where you know that when you go into a conductor, uh, what, if, you know, what if I like that punch sound? That's perfect. But then my music director likes this expansion, uh, like really, really soft high C right, or high D, whatever, uh, and, and then you cannot do it, and then we both are failing in our job, right? Mm -hmm. So whenever you're singing, I, I, I think that you have to show us in certain parts of the aria that some of them can be like this, but another ones can bloom, another ones can crescendo, another ones can be no end. So you, uh, uh, remember, you're showing every possibility of your product in those five minutes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, 1,000% yeah. agree. Sarah, can you tell us, um, were you doing an audition today? What would be the other four arias that you would offer along with this aria? Um, I would offer um, Martin Aller Aten. That's my German. Um, I would offer Je veux vivre. And I would offer, and this is 
on its way out. I'm still trying to find what's replacing it. Um, and in a pretty night because that's not my voice. Um, that's not who I am. Yeah. Uh, I love singing it and it's wonderful. Um, but it's so, just not. So here's what I want to say. And David, you can uh, feel free to contradict me on this. Um, you sent in for us Martin Alla Arten. And mm -hmm. we all know that that is the land where I came from. <laughs> and I thought it was spec freaking tacular. Spectacular. Lots of nuance. Super calm, super free, super beautiful. It's also a bit bigger. It's a bigger mm -hmm. fach than Lucia. Lucia right now is being cast with a voice the size of Lisette Oropesa, who is an amazing Lucia. Um, mm -hmm. Rachel Gilmore, Aaron Morley. Uh, these are the Lucias. And I have a feeling that you are a fach bigger. And so the reason that we lose some of the nuance is because the voice is being put into a smaller box than it actually is. So mm -hmm. I feel like we've got a size 10 foot in a size 7 shoe. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the Martern was so interesting to me because it was super clean, consistent, open, free, fantastic, all the way up, all the way down. This you have to put in a smaller space in order to navigate what Lucia is doing vocally. Right. What there was one space in the middle voice where I heard the whole voice, and I would like to encourage you to seek that space all the time. So, okay. what I heard was when you did, I heard me with this big, beautiful, full dramatic soprano voice, dramatic oratura voice. And then as you go up, I hear that again. I hear from F sharp and G up into mm -hmm. the upper register. I hear that bigger sound again. I feel like you're narrowing the voice in the middle in order to be able to navigate the top. So yeah. can I encourage you to try for me? Uh, basically, you're just going to do the mi ju and stop. Mi uh, ju! And just hold that ju space for me and then I'm gonna give you an exercise to do. a voice. Now, if we move that down, the same space applies. So, mi ju, try. Mi ju, Doesn't that make your life happy? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now, if I move it down, same space. Now try for me. In that same open space. So I think 
either now and David can tell me this from the acting uh, from the casting side of the table is the voice too big for Lucia have we moved forward and should she be looking at something more along the lines of Anna Bolena or Stifelio or uh, Maria Stuarda or Guillaume Tell something in the dramatic coloratura fach what do you hear David Brian can you unmute David unmute David <laughs> Are you there? Yes, you perfect. Um, you know, the thing is, it, it depends, you know, depends, depends the, the blend that the, the, the casting person, music director is going to choose. Uh, precisely this morning, we were discussing about Lucia in 2024 for Munich. And, and we wanted uh, a different sound, you know, we didn't want the theme sound. Mm -hmm. uh, and also tenor wise, we wanted somebody like, uh, you know, I was hearing you and I was like, oh my God, I wish I would have ever sang a Lucia with somebody like with your voice. I, I, I wish I would Lucia have ever gotten to sing Lucia. I never right? got to sing her. Everybody said the voice too big. We can't, you can't be Lucia. So I, I think it's, it's depending the casting director. Definitely the general today, the voice when you sing this way that I feel that is a, a more connected with, with, with who you are and, and a very gorgeous round sound. Yes. Um, Definitely, I, w I would go with something a little more more dramatic and, and, and bigger that that serves your voice and shows off your voice better. But but I would keep you know, it's 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 a hard talk because when you when you hear that sound, I personally I, I like it. I really I do. like it too. But I'm I'm yeah. thinking about Sarah. You're stunning. Yeah. What David is saying about keeping that big round sound through the middle, I personally want that in Lucia but not everybody does. Yeah, not everybody. So what my suggestion would be, would be to just bump up to a, bump up to a queen, bump up to a Donizetti lady that's a little bit bigger. It'll mm -hmm. be exactly the same beautiful coloratura. You'll be, you'll actually be able to keep the middle a bit more open and round because mm -hmm. they're a little heavier. They sit a tiny like bit low. a step lower. So mm -hmm. you'll get a little bit more of that throat space and you'll be able to keep it all the way up and all the way down. Mm -hmm. And you won't feel like you have to make the middle voice lower in order, or I'm sorry, the middle voice smaller in order to keep those big, fabulous high notes that you have. Does that make sense, Sarah? Yeah, and it's actually interesting um, that you say that because, you know, I sang my first Constanza last summer and in order to get through that role, I mean, obviously it's been it's lived in my body since then and it's gotten better but just to get through that role and I listen to recordings and it's just it's very narrow all the way through just mm -hmm. so I can access those notes and just so I can get through the role mm -hmm. um, so it, I think some of that is coming in here thinking yeah, all right and you're you just you're 28 now mm -hmm. the voice is gonna grow now because you're gonna have your your you know every seven years the women women our hormones change and 28 is exactly when my voice started to change and open, and then Martinella Arten and Queen of the Night were not possibilities for me anymore. <laughs> Even though I still have the F, doesn't mean I need to sing the F in public. You know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> so Sarah, I I would encourage you look at some of the bel canto s things of Verdi, the early Verdi, the Ernani, the Stifelio, um, Il Corsaro, things like that. And look, bump up your Donizetti just a bit. Look at a, the first Anna Bolena aria. Maybe look at one of the Stuarda arias. Um, and, and you could go into Guillaume Tell, into Mathilde Guillaume Tell. It's a bigger, it's a step bigger fach. And the Purno Tramur is an exciting aria. Very exciting. Great for competition. Really beautiful. And I think that when you get into the Colorastura stuff that's just a touch bigger and allowing that larynx to be nice and free and low, you won't feel like you have to narrow the voice in order to get through it. Right. Does that make sense? Yes, the rep does. will tell you. I mean, anybody who was on the class last week, the rep will tell you when the voice is in the right place and, and when it's right, it, it, it will come out, it will flow easily. Mm -hmm. um, and I think in order to navigate, you know, this tricky color tour for Lucia, you just have to narrow it a touch too much. And then something, then yes, you do punch it because it's yep. like you have to gear shift to get out of that small space into a bigger space. Does that make right. sense? Yeah. So and I would encourage you to go in that direction. Um, David is giving me a thumbs up. <laughs> so I hope that he agrees. Um, but it's really, it's a stunning instrument and bravissima, really. Brava, brava, brava. 
so much, Debbie. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank Fantastic, you. Fantastic, honey. Brava. Okay. Yes. David. Me? Me? Did no. Say, did you want to say something? I, I was just going to say, Sarah, you know, I have, I have the pleasure to hear you before. And this sound, that's the one. Like, I have never heard you sing like this. So that's the one. Don't move it. Memorize it. You know, that's the one. That's the Sarah, one. You can, you can find that space. I mean, it's, it's actually, it, it's hard because it, it does require a touch more of laryngeal uh, lowering. Um, coloraturas, high coloraturas, light lyric coloraturas, they like to hold the larynx kind of in a neutral position in the middle of the throat. In order to get that, the reason that miju works so well for you is because if you put your finger here on the notch of your larynx and say ju, it automatically goes down. Even just ju, just saying it, miju, it goes down. So what you need is about a quarter inch to a half an inch more of the tilt in the larynx in order for the entirety of the vocal fold to close in the back. And so that's why you're feeling like you're having to narrow because the back isn't closing. And so you're ending up having to gear shift through the passaggio in the secondo passaggio rather than being able to sing full and go through it. So try exercises um, with a little French Y, E, E. It's a, it's a perfect vowel for singing, especially for fuller voices. It gives you that ooh space with the E resonance. E. Oh, oi, 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 oi. If you say oi, 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 oh, then you can raise the soft palate and give it some ah. Oh, but those lower ooh, oh, laryngeal places, not depressing with the tongue, but just allowing the larynx to go down as it naturally is supposed to, those, that's how you get that full sound through the middle. Does that make sense? Sarah? <laughs> Anyway, there you go. That, that's what yes. my recommendation would be. <laughs> Thank you Bravissima. so much. Bravissima. Okay, Mr. Andres, are you there? Ryan. I'm trying to unmute him. Oh, good. Oh, Thank you. Okay. Yes, yes. Hello. Hello. Hi. Okay. Uh, my name is Andres Cascante, and this is my piano is not an inspector, a former <laughs> alumni of the master class. <laughs> Amazing. And I would like to, to keep the train of Lucia. I would like to sing Enrico's aria, Cruda Punesta Smania. Very good.
if you can see. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Again, David, I'm going to let you field first, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, can, can you hear me? Yeah, yes, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, uh, thank you, thank you for for that. You know, like we're we're selecting very, <laughs> very tough repertoire, guys. Kudos, kudos to you. It's one of the hardest areas. I have to say, you know, how old are you again? I'm twenty-six. Twenty-six. You well, know, I, <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> I, I think that this area is a little bit early, to be honest. For me, I I know that Lucia can be. Uh, a misconception with, with the Arias. I think that it sits technically in a place where you have to have a full command of your high passager in order to do it. And and right now you can get away by singing a little wide in certain parts. So I I personally I think that 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 I would you know keep it as a training aria. It also makes you ha sound a little heavier because you have to 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 keep that color that we expect in that in that in that aria i feel that actually this particular aria is very good if you are already in your prime as a verdian baritone you know one of my best uh, memories is hearing renato brusson singing out his prime this but when he was also singing in that season nabucco for example so you know it, so i think that it's it's a little early i think that 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 for me it's it, you know your voice is very pretty but you have still to control a bit your high passaggio in a more consistent uh, color of the sound because right now it you we can tell when it goes into into overdrive, and and I think that it's just technically it's still not right there. But the voice is very beautiful, um, and I and I could to you. I think that that we can get a little bit. I would try maybe Belcore. I will try maybe some some Mozart that helps you. To, to kind of get a little more control on that on that part of your of your voice, but thank you. The the, the color is really really pretty. So thank the you for that. Color is really fantastic, yeah. and for twenty six, it's a really it's yeah a yeah really yeah. really promising voice. Andres, yeah, thank you. I so agree. Much. Andres, what else would be if you were going into a yap audition? What else would be in the package along with with this aria? Or if you wanted to remove this aria, what would the other arias possibilities be? Yeah, well, this one, this one is uh, fairly new. I started uh, studying it during quarantine, so I okay, okay. First time singing it publicly. And, okay. Uh, uh, the other things would be I usually have uh, uh, the count aria. I don't need la causa. I like that. Um, I have. Uh, I really like baroque. And earlier, okay. So I have uh, Nel Monte del Abisso from Cavallano. Okay. I have. Um, Okay. And uh, depending, sometimes I add a Cazuela piece because I am Costa Rica and I'm very proud of my Spanish heritage. Fabulous. So I like to showcase that kind of like a bit of originality could be out of yeah. it. Person, the personally I have, so I have a Mi Aldea from Los Gavilanes. And, um, but if not, I sometimes uh, put a Lohanjus de Calme. From the okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I like some of those options better. I think. Davi, do you agree? I I think so too. I I think so too. I I think that that also, it's also where you are age wise for for casting. You know, more and more we are we're casting age appropriate or telling the story a little more for certain things. So I I, I really think that this one is more youthful and and definitely is going to take care a little bit of where you are vocally mm -hmm. today so i i think I, I i really think that that this this package is very good mm -hmm. without the lucia i think okay. so too and i i think david is right i think you could add belcore and then you would have a a, a bel canto option that sort of hints to us that eventually you will lead into this lucia because you obviously will yeah. Um, can I ask you, Andres, where do you think about your turn? Um, F, usually, F natural, I start feeling more spaceman in the back. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about, for the baritones and the tenors on the call, let's talk about the turn. The turn for you, literally, technically, scientifically, is a tilt of the larynx, okay? We talked about this last week, too. Here's your larynx. Ooh, yes. 
This is the notch that you feel right here in the middle of the throat, okay? The folds sit directly below that notch, okay? Basically, what you are doing when you turn, as a man, when you turn, is lowering and tilting the larynx so that those folds have greater space to elongate to make higher pitches. So if you take a rubber band and you pull it very taut, it's going to make a higher pitch when you flick it than if it's a shorter surface area, okay? So your turn is literally lower tilt. That's all you're feeling. So making more space is one thing. However, you have to think about that turn early. Oh, so okay. the reason we're getting kind of, um, there's some noise in the sound in the top. It's because the larynx has not lowered and turned early enough in order to pull the back of the fold together to create that pitch. So when you do the last note at the end, foramen rio, foramen rio, and then the high note, you actually need to start turning in the phrase before it so that when you go for the high note, you don't have to go and try to turn it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you sing the Forum in Rio just at the end there so I can hear where the high note's coming in? Yes, Melanie, do you mind to play, honey? You did amazing, P.S. I can't believe you just did that. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy. I love it. Melanie sang an amazing Queen of the Night last week. I, I die. It's just <laughs> incredible. Sorry, I'm just trying to find you on the call here. Uh, okay, okay. Can I? Yeah, can I just hear the end? Uh, just the fora menorio for the high note. What happens yeah. there? it's better so when you do foramen rio that has to be turned already so yeah. when you breathe you breathe in the turn now try not to lift that chin because when you lift the chin you lift the larynx so it doesn't when the larynx has tilted it's elongated for that pitch if you lift the chin you take away that elongation yeah. Then we get air coming through the back. You don't want that, yeah? So when you do foramen rio, foramen rio, leave it in this vertical position you've got. Don't lift that chin because then you lift the larynx and you ruin the elongation you've already made for yourself. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm. Can you try that for me? Yeah. Foramen rio. I mean, I die. I just like, I just like had a, like a chill run up my arms. <laughs> okay. Uh. You have to do that because the minute you start lifting that chin, I hear in the sound. It's, it's literally just air passing through a space at the back of the fold because the back of the fold hasn't zipped up. And that's because the larynx didn't tilt far enough to create that pitch. Does that make sense? Yeah. The same thing happens for me in e troppo, e troppo orribile. We can't go e troppo, e troppo orribile because that larynx goes straight up. We have to have some ooh space underneath it. So if you do a troppo, a troppo horribile, a horribile, we're, that's right. Then we keep that larynx down to make the tilt for that pitch. Can you try that for me? A troppo, a troppo horribile. Hello, hello. And then the legato is like, pfft, it knocks right into place. So also think about when you're doing this coloratura, when you have to turn for what's coming up next. Yeah. So if you're doing questo fatale sospetto, you can't come out of that turn and then think you're gonna go back up again. 
you got to keep that turn at the beginning of the first act. It's already turned then. So don't come back out of it to go back up. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then we hear gear shifting. And we yeah. don't want to hear gear shifting. We just want quest of all turned over already. Quest of and then it's there. Can you try? Try. I mean, hello. Hello. This is your new life. Turn early. Turn early. Yeah. And leave it leave it vertical. Think of the voice, think of that tilt down as you make that turn. Because right. li literally the turn is larynx tilt right. lower. That's it, it. it. It feels much more comfortable too. And of I feel like the, that gear shifting and the pressure of an audition, it becomes even more risky. More Absolutely. Because maybe in a practice room, somehow my body would manage to do it, but then... Absolutely. And don't you want to feel comfortable? I, I want my voice to just bruh and barf out the sound. That's what I want to feel. <laughs> okay. I don't want to feel like I'm like, I don't know where it's going. I don't want that. So if you keep that chin down, that vertical space is just going to come in and, and that larynx is just going to stay in that tilted, turned, happy position. Okay. That's, that's the one big fix that I would take if you were gonna keep this aria, which I don't know if you will, but if you decide you wanna keep it, that is the connection you have to make to keep yeah. to keep the legato, to keep the nuance, to keep the musicality, because then it becomes, it, it, it's spectacular. Do you understand? Yeah, of course. Yeah, any question? Um, yeah, actually, um, for, for both of y'all, like being, um, let's say like a younger, um, Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, my husband was your was your age and the same voice type, and he did a lot of Don Giovanni and Leporello and and Count, which you said you already have those, and 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 the Lieben Hassen, That role that that's a great role for you right, as right. a young baritone. Absolutely. Um, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very. Those things are not taxing you. You know what I'm saying? You can sing. It, it, it's like Musetta for sopranos. Musetta is 20 minutes long. It might have a big aria, but it's 20 minutes long. And so a young soprano can sing Musetta in any opera house and have a beautiful debut. Nobody worries if she's famous. Nobody worries the fee that they're paying her. And it's not going to tax her because it's 20 minutes long. So if you pick something like the Harlequin, the Harlequin is short. He's only in the second act. He stands around in the first act, but you know his big stuff is in the second act with Serbinetta. That's not going to tax you, you know. Even Leporello, Leporello is not going to tax you. You'd have an easy time of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? David, I'll let you feel this too. Feel <laughs> this too. I, you know, I think that 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 besides giving you know uh, giving you just one thing about repertoire i think that that getting the ability even in just vocal exercises to sustain that vocal tilt that jen talk about it through through your range and that transition very very uh seamless uh, it can it, ha it can be more about the, the the let's say more about the lifting weights than actually going into playing right mm -hmm. one of the things that we are so focused is like well you know i'm a big voice i'm going to learn like votan or something like would mm -hmm. you need to sometimes uh i don't know and jen like my preparation when i when i started singing like i it was years of of uh years. you know garcia and different like vocalizations that really settle my technique yes. so then by the time that, that i wanted to sing it was not about the rep, it was about my ability to just apply that technique to whatever piece of music was in front of me. Absolutely, sure. and that's really important, Andres. If you mm -hmm. can figure out this, this laryngeally tilted, lowered position, everything becomes easy. Not just bel canto, not just Mozart, not everything. Then you understand how to sing everything, 
And when somebody says, hey, can you pick up a whatever in Germany? You can say, oh, yeah, I got it. We're good. You know, yeah. that feeling that your body is working, your body is doing the work for you, but the throat is doing nothing. Right. The throat is not tired. You sing all day. You have you're not tired because your body's doing the work. The larynx is released and low. The muscles are not grabbing. They're released and wide and everything is open and free. If you can do that in the next four years, when you do turn 30, then you're gonna be ready to do whatever you want. You know? Mm -hmm. Yes, do the competitions, make some money. Yes, definitely, make that money. But you don't necessarily need to do full roles right now. Cover, covering is awesome. Go to a summer program and cover, I mean, cover Chonard. You know, it would be awesome. You would have a great, first of all, you'd have a great time. But second of all, you'd be around all of these people that are doing it and you know, you can sort of fall in love with it, see what you want to do, what you don't want to do, and keep that technique going in the process. Does that make sense? Yeah. Bravo. Amazing. So Fantastic job. Well. Okay, so now we're moving out of sort of the yap section of our class and we're going into our emerging professional singers. So yeah, everybody, so everybody out, is out is 30 and older. <laughs> Um, so we're going to start with Miss Anne. Are you there? I am. Hello. Yay. Okay. Go ahead, honey. All right. My name is Anne Wright. I'm 36 and I'll be singing Es gibt ein Reich. Thank you. Diese 
You have an extraordinary set of pipes, you know. It's, uh -huh. <laughs> it's it's an incredible voice. You you have a lot of heart. So kudos, kudos to you, you know, like um and I think that, that is that is right in the money for you, you know, what, what you're singing. Uh mm -hmm. I like your commitment. Uh I, I like certain ideas of phrasing that, that it was very fresh. I, I had a little bit of moment of goosebumps. So kudos to I you. <laughs> that, that was very good my only question a little bit you know and it's something that i have to say that is very very like singer singer that is starting to especially humongous voices like you you know sometimes you tend to to open a little bit onto the horizontal like plane when when you get very yeah like so you know how how jen did it very well when we drew you know, like it's it's the yeah. same. If I can sing, I I'm when I started singing, my favorite tenor, and it still is because of different reasons, is Giuseppe Di Stefano, right? Yeah. So I would love to sing <laughs> right? But I but I eventually you learn to sing like <laughs> because you you focus your sound, you a little bit a little bit gets a, gets more harmonics in your sound. It's a tiny yeah. fix that is especially when you're going to go into the top of your voice and i'm sure jen is going to maybe address the path to that a little a little more clear than me but it helped to keep the the previous phrase and all that that journey a little more gathered so then if you want to expand a little bit and you need the space then right. in the top knot is is happening but if you go already spread that's when you are like oh my god you know, it's, it's, and I know like, I, I, yes, the struggle to not spread is real, you know, it so. Is. It is, especially in this repertoire, don't you want, I mean, I just want to be like, ah. Yeah. And especially, especially coming in as an old habit that I'm working on, but then in, I have to make sure that it's there in the moment when it needs to be there. So I totally get that, yeah. You know, I, but, but kudos, I, I think that you are right, right during the money, you know, and uh, congratulations. Like I, I didn't, I didn't know about you. And, and so that, that's very impressive. Really yeah, good. I, you. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just, I want to address something because I think this is great. Um, while we have Anne on, 
Um, I have a question in the chat here that says, could you please give some advice for people who are later bloomers? And then I have second, the later bloomers, and then I have third, later bloomers. And Anne clearly um, is a later bloomer, and that's okay. Um, I was also a late bloomer. I didn't start going into career until 30. 30 is when it happened for me. Anne has a much bigger voice. I wouldn't think that 10 years ago, well, first of all, I know Anne, so I know 10 years ago Anne was not singing Ariadne, so right. we're good. But <laughs> Anne, when did you really feel comfortable to take on this bigger repertoire? And I'm going to ask you what your other pieces would be as well. But sure. when, when, when did you start to feel comfortable to really say, you know what, this is me, I'm, mm -hmm. I am a baby Debbie, and I'm going to sing this <laughs> repertoire. When did that happen for you? We, um, I had it in my mind since I b started singing again about five years ago, but just physically, when it went from being possible to feeling like, oh my God, this is me, was about a year, year and a half ago. Um, I, I went, started going through that second change that you spoke about that I had never heard anyone speak about before because I, all I'd ever heard was somewhere around 28 to 30. And I thought, well, that's over. So that, that can't be what's happening to me right now. There's it was. <laughs> yeah. Because women, our hormones change every seven years. So 28 to 30, you've got one. And then 35 to 38, there's another one. Right. So when I, and I'll age myself, I'm past 38, but at 35 to 38 was really when people started saying, you're Tosca, you're Aida, right. you're the, because then I had that heft in the voice that you need in order to do those roles. A 26 year old doesn't have that for Tosca. It's not there yet. It didn't, they think the cords thicken, the muscles thicken, the, the hormones change and men too, your bodies change, your weight changes, your, your, your physical chemistry changes. Your skin, I mean, you can see it in your skin when your hormones change. Some people get really clear skin, other people get adult acne. It happens, right? So, mm -hmm. and to say a year ago at 35, it's a perfect time. It's a perfect time for you to start now into career and into covering these roles and, and really getting this repertoire out there. So let's talk about what the other arias are that would go around this. Sure. Um, so I, this I haven't auditioned with yet, but it's um, clearly on the radar is Dermena Zippe, um, Ziglinda, um, Divinité de Styx, Non Midir, um, Damor, and um, yeah, that's about, that's, those are the ones that we're working on the most. Dich uh, Teure Halle, kind of dipping my toe into the Wagner. Um, I, kind of, I had known them, but they didn't feel right until just about now. And I will say that it coincided with my chest voice really coming into its own. I was actually uh, going to talk to you about your chest voice, so yes. I'm so glad that you talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about a voice this size in Dona Ana? Ryan, can you unmute David? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, again, I. It's it's rare because you know you you and I sang. You you had a very incredible Donana. It's one of my favorite Donanas that I heard that I remember when when I we sang it together, that. right? And uh, and you had uh, a very significantly bigger voice than the other cast that we were we were doing. Yeah. And and for example, for me it was as Don Otavio, it was better because I, for me because my voice was more in the in the lyrical weight than in yeah, the more tenor weight. Mm -hmm. So when when I sang with with somebody that was more in that the traditional kind of like pure lyric of, of that, it's the traditional way of casting today in America that role. Mm -hmm. Uh, in Europe, I have to say that even the the, the Donana and Countess are even ha like being casted a little bit, even lighter. Like, right now, we yeah. see Marlies Peterson, we see Diana Damrau dipping their things, and they come from the super super high chloraturas. Yep. I particularly like this sound, but it's not the commercial tendency today. Yeah. Okay. So I actually feel that today, you know, and and, and this is a business decision of the days yeah. of today. 
not my personal choice. I think Ariadne is right in the money. I think the German repertoire for you is early Wagner. You know, the young, the young ladies like Elsa, Elsa. Green is, is right, is right. Great for you. Uh, so I, I think uh, Dan Heuser is good for you. I think that you can, you can be right there and, yep. and getting to the workforce way faster that way yep. than, than, than Donana. I think Donana is going to be, something that also is going to be difficult to shift gears if, if if you start with something like like that unless you know unless that you are that freak of nature and it might be with with what i see <laughs> from one another you know the other one that used to do it is actually teaching the class so you know you can get from those things but 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 it's not very common so yeah yeah I will say I, because i feel like Dona Ana wastes the space for you on your list because okay. a, no, nobody's going to ask for it. And if they do, they're of the, you must have a Mozart camp. And I don't agree. So I think it's wasting a mm -hmm. space where you could have something else really freaking exciting. I'm okay. I'm thinking of the pleure, pleure, mes yeux from the seed, just to give you something okay. else to sink your teeth into. Um, I, uh, David, what do you think about Turandot? I, I think Turandot, if she keeps that, uh -huh. Like yeah, we'll Sergio, I I actually you know you have such a rich tone all over your your range you know depending where where you are um, in your in your you know personal life your preparation everything I would also check pick dam and medium for Menot mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, okay because they are right in the money for you in that kind of sound that you can do also you know your sound is very 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 round. I don't know what you're in coloratura. You know, we didn't we didn't hear your trovatore, so we, we might have to have another session. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's beautiful. Yes. very beautiful. I've heard it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, <laughs> but uh, I I think that you know, like the the possibilities, especially in the in the German repertoire with mostly Strauss and Wagner, you are yeah. right there. She's right know? there. Yeah, I agree. And I just want to talk a second about your primo passaggio. Uh, yeah, I'm hearing, and it could be where the the camera is placed, but okay. I am hearing some air coming through the primo passaggio, which is causing you to widen as you go up because I think you're trying to shut the chords because you're also hearing the air. So okay. I, I want to encourage you. To, I'm going to give you an exercise so you can. I want to encourage you to choose. We, and we talked about this on the class last week. You get to choose as a dramatic voice and as someone who is past 30, when you use that chest and when you don't and how much percentage of chest you can add or not add. Mm -hmm. And as someone who is 36, a dramatic voice, you want to start using a percentage of chest in the primo passaggio in F and E. And okay. right now it's it's 80% head voice and 20% chest voice. And so what's happening is I don't get the full closure of the fold and I'm hearing some air escaping. So okay. the top and the bottom are exactly the same tilt of the larynx. So right. when you feel your high B flat, which I know is your happy place, that is the same on low B flat. So I'm going to give you an exercise where you can actually match all of them, feel mm -hmm. through the primo passaggio, and then you get to choose if you want to use chest or head when we get E flat, E, F, F sharp, right in through there. Okay? Okay. So just start for me. We feel <laughs> and stretch into awe in the same space as the high note would be. We which I want you to keep in chest. So okay. it's going to be... And I want you to physically shift the voice into chest 
on that fifth, on the E, going up mm -hmm. and going down, okay? okay? Then I'm gonna let you do it in head so that you can feel the difference in the throat space between the two, okay? okay. So in that nice, we oh, find that space, we. Now, there, no moving. So you don't have to widen at all. Right. You need zero widening. widening. Right. Try the B flat. Oh. to adjust the space more vertically on the B flat, but don't go this way, go this way, okay? Oh. Oh. freaking tacular. Now, <laughs> on the third, on the F, try to mix in some head voice. So, instead of oh, in full chest, try <laughs> so it becomes a transition into the head almost like the turn that we were talking about for Andres before. Okay. But it's not 90% head, 10% chest. It's kind of a 60 40. Yeah? Okay. 60% mm -hmm. chest, 40% mm -hmm. head. Try. Oh. Okay. Is being wasted. Now yeah. try. In meinem Herzen sein und meinem Herzen sein. Diese Grüne Erden bleiben schon geschmückt. In one breath. Yeah. Okay. So und okay. meinem Herzen first. Und in meinem Herzen sein. Give me the 60-40. Give me the 60-40 okay. mix. to decide, do I want 60-40, do I want 70-30, maybe mm -hmm. I want full, who knows? Maybe if you're singing Aida, you want full chest, who knows, okay? Right. So 
work with that, but also going straight up in a vertical way so that the larynx is staying down because sometimes when we pull wide, we actually pull up. Yeah. Yes. So the tongue, the base of the tongue is attached. Here's my little larynx. The base of the tongue is attached here. If you pull wide in the mouth, the tongue actually will go up too, and then the larynx will tilt back up. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, there is some widening for us. Yes, there is. You need it. You have to have that space back there for B right. and C, C sharp when you get there in D. You do need it. But before that, we don't need it. Mm -hmm. yes. Try one more time. Right. Bunim, no widening. Bunim, it's on my, my, my. And if, and I know this, it's very hard in your, in your head when you're hearing air and you're going, they are coming together. And so what we try to do is grab and squeeze, and that's not the way. Trust right. that lower and staying vertical will get them together. A little more chest mix. Uh, maybe you have allergies. Maybe you're not feeling well, whatever. Add a little more into the chest mix because at, in, as a dramatic voice, that chest mix is going to help get that primo passaggio zipped right up okay. and just go straight. That That's sense? great. Yes, yes, definitely. Bravissima. Bravissima. Thank you. Wonderful. <laughs> Beautiful work. Okay. Um, next then, we have Miss Molly. Miss Molly. Hi, girl. Thank you for having me. My name is Molly Dunn. I'm 30 years old and I'm singing Si Mi Kiyama no Mimi from La Boheme. Oh 
You know, I I think that that uh, you know you have you have a very beautiful voice. I think that 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 is still there. We have to work technically a little bit. You know, I feel that that definitely a little bit your your tendencies to sing a little bit spread and a little bit with a high larynx sometimes. That that makes the sound a little unstable a tiny bit. Um, I I I I, 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 I I'm trying to organize my idea, but I. I really, really, really encourage everybody that is attending to try to have uh, a very idea to to guide the sound. Not a guide, like I'm pushing, but like, but your lips have to be a little bit closer. It's it makes a whole difference. You know, there's a lot in, a lot of soprano singing that when they get quiet or they get into their middle, they sing like here. You know. And and I and it's and it's a little difficult sometimes to 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 get the sound. You feel that you're being more intimate, but then we don't hear you. You know, so that that is that is one thing. The second one, uh, and it's hard because I I assume that you have a pre-recorder tape, right? That that, that yeah. Yeah, they're it's hard. It's hard to hard to to get a to sense. Get a sense. of uh, phrasing a little bit, uh, but definitely I. You know, I, it was very telling that at the very, very end when you had a space, you were doing whatever you wanted just the last phrase, right? So I, I cannot super judge that in, in, in that sense. But I definitely, I think that if you just give me a tiny bit of, uh, uh, you know, like C, it doesn't have to be C, that is singing for you. That's what you're hearing here, you know, the, the distance is better. Right, but if you do see me, you're you're sending the sound to the public, you know, and that's a, a very basic thing, you know, and, and I'm sure Jen is going to address a little bit more on 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 larynx, but uh, but my advice would be that I think that 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 you are, you know, like until I I feel that you have a little more connection with your with your chest voice and and your body, it's it's hard to tell you which repertoire. So I, I don't know if Jen is going to go into that. Uh, into the into getting that a little more connection to your chest, I think that then I can diagnose a little better the repertoire. Jen, what do you think? Yeah, so um, so Molly, um, t Molly, tell David a little bit about your background. Molly's actually a late bloomer um, because, um, because he started, he started in, in the theater world. world. Um, yes. So talk a little bit to us about um, when you transitioned into opera and what made you do that, Molly. Okay, hello. Um, so I, I studied musical theater my entire life and I went to school for musical theater, um, even my master's so that I could teach musical theater. And, um, but I always wanted to work on an aria with my teachers and I always was put with the opera voice teachers at all the schools. And um, I felt really lost in musical theater because I was like, I don't get to sing like any high notes and it just didn't feel like I felt authentic in my art in musical theater, I'd say, because I really love singing this way. So I found some teachers to help me, and I, I know I still have some technical work to do, but I'm trying to figure out the right repertoire and, and jump in full, full heart. And how long ago, Molly, was that change, do you feel? I... Two years? Or last year, two years ago? I'd say two... It's been like two years of, I guess, auditioning but I don't really know where to audition. Well, I'm just, it's a hard spot because I don't really have an opera resume, so. Right. Um, so I'm so happy that we have you on the class because I think there's a lot of people that are like you, and, and actually I was like you. Um, I was 28 when I went into, I, I mean, and, and David will tell you, I, I have always had this kind of bigger instrument but nobody really knew about what to do with it, basically. And so um, I went to Bologna when I was 28 as a young artist. And then David and I met the year after when, when we did the, the Giovanni together. And then when I was 30, I was a young artist again. 
Mm. And so I did the Young Artist Program at the Caramore Festival, which is now Teatro Nuovo with, with Will Crunchfield. But I was still a young artist at 30. And I sort of bridged kind of a gap between I was a young artist and still doing competitions, but also I sang some things main stage for some smaller companies like Michigan. We did uh, was where David and I did the the Giovanni, and I feel like with your transition into the opera world, you're kind of sitting on that kind of transition place for for between the young artist world and the professional world, and I think. Yes, obviously there is technical work to do and things like that, but I think the voice is exceptionally beautiful and the natural color that you have and 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 just the you know there's the cry in the voice that I really enjoy about you. Thank so, you. I think that as a as in your age, I think you have to seek out some of the young artist programs which you already are, I know. Um David uh Molly's going to be with us uh for Morelia this summer actually. Um so I think seeking out some of these young artist training programs to sort of help you find that repertoire. But also, I know as a musical theater singer, because I also did musical theater, that we hold everything right here. Ah, yeah, that's how they teach us to build, right? High larynx, squeeze it out. It's always that way, especially, especially for female voices. So the transition for you in this time, ooh, I told you there was gonna be thunder. <laughs> the transition for you in this time is finding that high space which you already have and dropping below it, right? So taking those beautiful cheekbones that you have when you're doing, gorgeous, but allowing the throat and the pharynx to remain open and free and lazy. So to sure. you from the musical theater world where we're trying to get diction across this way, I, 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 you have to think more, oh. so there's co this constant morbidezza, this, this constant space behind the sound. Yeah. The phrase that I loved the most was when you did Ger Germania and then you allowed that chest mix to come up into the middle voice. That I loved. So let's go from there and see if we can get you into that open chest place that you found to come up a little bit into the secondo passaggio and then above the staff. So if you do just do Germolia in un va and and I loosen the loosen the throat just a little bit for that chest note on E. Already, I have twice as much sound. Okay. David mm -hmm. is great. You must mm. open your mouth. <laughs> you must open the mouth. Do one more time and allow that vaso to relax down for your and just leave that nice low laryngeal space for me with a little Y, a little French Y. Try folio. Folio, folio, lost me. It's not genteel anymore. Exactly. It's genteel. Genteel, that's musical theater world. Genteel is the opera world. Try così. Oh, and now il profumo, il profumo. It's not profumo because we won't understand it. Profumo, profumo. Try il profu. Now I have the full voice. Now I have 
have the lyr lyric soprano happy place that just goes up and down and blossoms as it goes. Stunning, Molly. Now, yeah. it has to stay, the, the, we talk about the lowering of the larynx, okay? And we've talked about it with everybody today because it does have to lower and tilt. The other part of that, though, is that it has to anchor. It can't just lower and then be allowed to pop back up again. It has to lower and then the muscles around the base, around here, have to anchor that sucker down, okay? It's not pushing from the tongue. It's not, it's not, it's not, it's not 10 feet of double chin, it's not that. It's a widening of these large muscles right here. These are the sternocleidomastoids. They're attached to the sternum, the clavicle, and the jaw. These move wide so that the larynx, the intrinsic muscles here, can lower and anchor. So it's really a lower widen, lower widen. So Molly, can you just do, oh, oh. So go from a wide ah to an uh sound. Oh, oh, oh. And then you feel the base of the larynx right down here. Now, if you take your fingers, Go on either side, you'll feel a muscle inside of there. You'll feel this muscle right there, okay? This guy sits behind this big fatty muscle. This is the muscle that does the anchoring, okay? So it, you lower, uh, and we leave it there. <laughs> the easiest way to think of that anchor is just to have constant uh space in the throat, okay? So, oh, 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 So when you go up, feel, put your fingers right here. If that sucker pops up, it's not anchored. All right, try il profumo. and you will know what we hear is in that vibrato and it's even and consistent and we have that sparkly champagne on the top all the time yeah. yes try it with the b flat uh let's see where we are in a primo oh do we have the b flat? no we don't have the b flat il primo it's just a natural uh so il primo so it can't go il primo can't do that Il primo, il primo bacio, and try to anchor that larynx for the A. E. I saw the chin go up just a nah. touch. Let yeah. it go down and elongate in the back, and then you're gonna have it. Il primo, il primo bacio. Try. For you but you must do it out of the um, the musical theater world space it can't be in the musical theater world space anymore and even when you sing musical theater which you should and i do all the time you can use it for encores etc but you must use the opera space it ha it has to be released and in my opinion singing musical theater should be exactly the same with a released low larynx however they don't teach it that way so we just have to change your thinking so it's never bright and wide anymore. It's low and vertical. Does that make sense, honey? Yes. Fabulous. Davi, do you want to add anything? I I would just add one one thing that you know. Thank you for telling me that you come from the musical theater uh, school. Uh, one of one of the very quick fixes or 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 ideas that I that I will say is that. You know, in, in musical theater, because most of the time now, professionally, you have amplification, right? And it's right here, right here. So the diction has to be here. 
but in operate your diction has to be in your overtones and the only way that you get that diction overtone is here and even and 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 i know that there are those conductors and jen you and i have sang with those that they want the the chess at the lance yeah i can be turbo right and you're like <laughs> And you're like, well, yeah, in the rehearsal, it's going to be working like this, but in the sure, hall, like, like, in the hall. like that, you know, so it's, it is definitely um, a kind of changing of concepts, you know, yes. that, uh, and that for us, the, the pharynx is constantly open. The mm -hmm. closing of the pharynx that happens in musical theater to create belt sounds isn't something we do. The, no. the pharyngeal space has to stay open. And then... Yeah the tongue, the teeth, and the lips can create the diction up here and, and the sides of the tongue. But we don't need to shut off that space in order to do it. We actually have to keep it open and break everything blah, 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 like that. So it's just a change in concept, Molly, that's all. Yeah. Yeah? Thank you. Well done. Brava. Bravissima. OK, Fatou, are you there? Is he there? I'm here. Yay! Okay. Hello, I am Fatou Sutsue, and today, oh, sorry, I'm 34 with a birthday next week. Yay! And today I'll be doing Zygmunt's first aria, Friedmund Dorf ich nicht heißen, accompanied by my iPhone 10. Oh, she's born. 
I can't hear you, Jen. You have Jen. Oh my God. Amazing. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Bravo, bravo. Uh, bravissimo. I don't know if you can see everyone's applauding. I know you can't hear, but that was really fantastic. <laughs> really fantastic. Okay, David, I'm hitting up you first. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, uh, you, you have an incredible set of pipes, beautiful, beautiful singing. I, I, I was really impressed. Um, you know, it's, it's really, really tiny edges that I would, you know, I would say in, in my, in my assessment. Um, I, I think, you know, like that, that sometimes for coloring and dramatic purposes, because you in general have very good discipline in how you keep your mouth shape. So kudos to you. Uh, but just because you're singing soft, you, you just don't, like, maybe was your intention to spread but then there's a tiny bit of the association of the consistency of your sound. And it's just very, very tiny thing. But remember that in theater, you want to keep people engaged with the story instead of thinking like what happened. Right. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm singing piano, you know, like uh, I, I still try to keep the same mouth shape. Yeah. You know, I know that it's going to be less easy to hear yourself. But you have to, this is where you, you kind of like flying blind a little bit, but you have to trust the technique yeah. that, is, that is there, you know. Um, I, uh, what, may I ask why, why this repertoire, like you, there's moments also that I find your, your, your sound, I'm still trying to define it because it's very beautiful and you sing it very, very well, right? But sometimes it can go into more Italian places. There, there are places uh, around FG that you can, that you get a little more frontal and then a little more Germanic, let's say. So I, I think, Jen, if you help me also to address, you know, like there, I think that he has that, that round and that larynx still very, very well, you know, in a very high degree maneuver, very beautifully. I just want to have 100% of commitment on that. Yeah. In your lips and in your larynx, just you're like 95% there, you know, like in, in this one. So if you just really commit to that type of singing all the time, so then your body is the one doing the dynamic changes. Yeah. Uh, and when you are really engaged, you are world class, man. Like it's you belong. You're we are right there. So, you know, and you're a tenor. So I, I think that that is you're you're in really, really good shape. So congratulations. Again, it's tiny, 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 tiny adjustments. So I will, Fatu, is it okay if I um, let out the secret about you? Sure, yes. So Fatu and I actually work together. <laughs> so so he's one of mine. Um, oh. And we have been working together for a little bit now, a couple of months now. Yeah. And um, we have actually found high notes he didn't know he had. Um, I can hear. I can hear. You can like, hear them. He yeah. has high C with no problem and he has C sharp too. So, uh, Fatu, can you tell David a little bit about sort of um, coming out of college and finding Sherry and moving into this repertoire um, and sort of how uh, the development has been in the last couple of years that you've actually found the right repertoire? Can yeah, you actually. So in, so in academia, I, I was singing... Well, I didn't have a, actually, I didn't do a lot of aria work and except for some, a little bit of, well, actually not a little bit, mostly Mozart and some, some Italian, you know, Rodolfo, which I struggled through for so long and I couldn't figure out why it wasn't working. Um, and then I auditioned for the, a program and their, their comments were like, what the hell are you singing? And I was like, oh, I'm going to sing this. Um, and so I didn't know what my voice was. And then after academia, I found Sherry Greedewald over at San Francisco Opera. And she was like, just come meet with me. We met. And she was like, here, just try Winterstrom. I think you might enjoy it. And I'm like, ooh, but that says Wagner's name. I don't know. Mm, that's a lot. Um, so I took it on and sang it. And it was the first time in any piece of repertoire that I've ever sung since being alive that I felt my voice, that it was my voice. It was the first piece of repertoire I've ever had. Um, and so that was, and then she was just like, okay, well, then now let's try this. Let's try this. Let's work on this. Now, now that you know you have this voice, let's try not to be a tractor in a field of daisies and figure out what we can do with it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So that's pretty much it. I, it's only been about two years in like starting to study this repertoire. Yeah. So what else? What else is in your let's say your audition package? I'm so, sorry. It's, now it's, being it's, kind of flux. it's in flux as far as it's what it is. It's like. we're playing because we've also found out that he has quite easy coloratura. 
So we're looking at some Idomeneo. Idomeneo. Uh, There's a few other Wagner. And, Wagner. and some more Wagner. And P the Peter Grimes is spectacular. Um, but we're also, we also had a small chat about Polione as well. Um, I was going to say, you know, like you, your possibilities, man, when, when, when you have this technique ability, your possibilities are endless because you can, you can go in the repertoire of Brian Jade, in the repertoire of Gregory Kunde, in the repertoire of Simon O'Neill, you know, like you have a very, very, very particular voice that when you want, you keep that healthy larynx and you color very well. You know, it can go a little more frontal and you're singing Italian repertoire. You can go a tiny bit behind and it's more Britain, it's more Germanic, mm -hmm. you know, you, but, but the basis of the technique that you and Jen are, are, are doing is very difficult to find today. You know, it was very homogeneous sound. It's very, 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 very spectacular. We, sh we should chat uh, offside it's a little very bit. very beautiful. And I'm so excited for him because there are, he's kind of, I, I see me in him because he is a chameleon. And I think that he can do a lot of things. And he just needed, when we started working together, he just needed, again, and this is for everyone on the class, he just needed a half an inch of space, a half an inch of tilt in that larynx, and this voice opened, and it, re I mean, he's always had this, the voice is amazing, but now to be able to say, I have a solid B flat, a B and a C, what, that opens up the world for you you know? So I, I wanted to have Justin on with you, Fatou on with you, because as a tenor with a big voice, I know you hear just, there's just one note that comes out and you go, what happened? <laughs> right? Yeah, I too. <laughs> just, yeah. So it's, it's really, it's a matter of obviously consistency and trusting that, and this is hard for everyone, trusting that even when you don't hear the sound, that it's still a consistent sound quality coming out to the public. And that's very hard for everyone to, to sing piano and to trust this still open space because in your ear, it, it sounds airy. It doesn't yeah. sound like what you want it to sound like but outside we hear that um can you just honey go to the end for me mm -hmm. where we change the color yeah so, uh, I'll, I'll, don't don't worry about your iphone 10 over there so um mancha mancha and i I know on the accompaniment, they went through the Volkswagen. I want you to hold that F a little bit longer so that we really get the bloom in that. Okay. And then when we do the Einwölfing, look at the dynamic change. We've got Fortissimo on the first bar and then Piano on the second bar. So try Einwölfing. Keep that U position and just bring the shape of the vowel a little more towards uh, 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 the little Y. Okay. Yeah, can you try for me? Uh, now, ein Wö. of these little consonants, especially in German, they have to come on to that isolated diaphragm, yeah? So I will, I will mir das, yeah? So we can, we can implode those consonants with air without changing the sound of the piano. So I mir das, use the body to do that. Then I Then Nice glado. Then Then 
And you can keep that Kent stuff too. Do use the wool. It's perfect. That perfect place. Mancha wool. And just go for Yeah, exactly. Just open from that O position. Then as pretty. That one. That one. Then everything stays in line and we don't lose a little bit of resonance on one note in the phrase or two notes in the phrase because what happens is the voice is so beautiful and it is so resonant and gorgeous when we lose one. When one comes out of line, we hear it. Yeah. And it sticks out and we go, what happened there? <laughs> right? So yeah. then what happens, right? If we go if we go up from there, if you do the that you can take that position. And go up from there. Try Dennis Riffing. naturally tilted larynx but it brings the resonance into this frontal position rather than saying put it in the mask which doesn't exist it brings it forward into the space of the sinus cavities and the skull so that the bone conduction can happen naturally and give you that resonance that you need for this repertoire to get over all those instruments right. making sense yes yeah. david do you want to add anything else here you know, I I I saw um, I I uh, I have to say that that one of the things for that we mentioned in uh, of the questions for late bloomer it just happened. Yeah. One of the the fastest things to get into the career if you're a late bloomer is find a network opportunity when one person in in. That, that is in the business that can help you to get into the workforce, connect the dots, you know? So, uh, and this is it, like, I didn't know you, but like, you're a, you're a major voice, you know? A major it, voice, right? You know? So that, that's, then I know, you know, that that's happened, you know? So I, I think that, that, that that's my best realistic business thing is find a way, even if it's in a pay to sing, in a master class, uh, in, a, in a dinner, anything that you can to get in front of the person that is making the decision. Because normally the, the pipeline for the ones that are not, you know, in time bloomers is you, you are in school and then you're going to competitions, auditions, young artist program, and then you get into the pipeline. But if you have to go around that, you have to arrive to the decision makers uh, in this way, you know, but when, when they are actually in a situation just like this. So, you know, for, for, for Fatu, you are, you are an incredible talent. Just, just keep at it. You know, you are so, so close because, uh, and I think, you know, you're completely employable today, you know, and the more you start doing it, you know, the more consistent you're going to have, because really the, the difference sometimes into like, unemployment and richness is that one note that you didn't come out of it so you know keep at it congratulations for your great work really really important voice amazing everyone you did a fantastic job today so i'm gonna segue what david just said about having someone to take you into the pipeline when you are a late bloomer i was a late bloomer and our guest next week is who put me in front of the people and that is Martina Arroyo. So next week we will have the great and incredible Martina Arroyo with us. If you are on the class this week and you want to observe, you have first dibs. So send the email to masterclass at fwopera.org 
you if you get your email in this weekend you will be first on the list because we are not announcing her until Monday so you know first Martina was the one who put me in front of people and honestly I owe the fact that I am here today sitting in front of you to her because she took me from a situation at Indiana University where I was not doing so well and in New York City she kept me singing and she kept me in front of people and she guided me and mentored me and I'm telling you she is a wonderful wonderful human being and I am so happy that we can have this opportunity to share with her and I'm so happy that we've had this opportunity to share with David would anyone like to ask any questions in five minutes in the next five minutes we can have a couple of questions from the chat and then we will sign off for the day let me check over in the chat and see if anybody's got something. Uh, anybody want to throw something up? I'm back here. Managing career when you have kids. That's a great question. David, I'm going to let you field that because I don't have any of those. Uh, <laughs> um you know, it, it is tough, you know, I, I, I actually, it's, it's funny because we, we have um, Sarah, my, my wife is uh, Sarah Garland, she, she's a singer, she, she has a, a very beautiful career, and, um, and it's tough, you know, it's, it's, you have to work with your family and friends and, and the companies that you work with in, in order to make it work, you know, it, it's a lot of work, but it's very rewarding, you know, I, I, uh, it's just a lot of communication, uh, a lot of devotion, and actually, I, I believe that the kids sometimes, uh, definitely in the in, in Sarah's place, you know, we we met as Adler Fellows in San Francisco, change our our kind of like me 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 aspect that is very needed in a successful yes. career, right? Uh, into like, well, you know, I don't have the mental space to be all about myself, so I just have to grow with the punches and actually in her case in, in her in was very very good for her because then she couldn't really thought about do they like me or not when you have vomit here 50 <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, I do think that is that is good I think that you have to to be very aware that this is um uh, great you know actually um, I think my wife is, is hearing me outside or is uh, because she's like I can have Tomas run. she just texts me I can have Tomas running here right <laughs> and, uh, and and so it's it's uh, you just have to have communication with with your support system whoever whoever is uh, is that because then it's it's a very demanding thing also uh, as, as we know you have to be the education of the kids it's a complicated issue but it's possible you just have to really be aware that there's a lot of traditional things in, in, in how do you educate and how you're present in the life of your kids that you might have to switch with another with another angle. Yes, and it's uh, actually, we will, so everybody knows, next week we are starting a midweek chat and lecture series as well along with these master classes. And one of those chats will be with Lucas and Irina Meacham about this exact topic, about having a family, having a career, and how to make it work. And I'm having them because I don't have any children and I am not going to have children. I love everybody else's kids and then they go home and I go to sleep for 12 hours in my bed. <laughs> I love kids, but I can't, this is my kid. And that is an okay decision to make for anyone on the call who thinks you know, I can't have a, mad, a, a family, I can't have a career, I can't have this. You have to make that decision for yourself. And it's okay if you say, you know what, I can't have a family. I can't even have a dog, which stinks. I really want one, but my allergies are too bad. So you have to know yourself, you have to know what's best for you. And the partner that you choose also, you know, that's a, that's a big part of it. And thankfully, David and I both have very supportive very understanding partners, both of whom are in business or were in the business. My husband was a singer, but now he's a speech pathologist. And you know, they're both very understanding and David is very understanding of his wife as well. So it's, it's a lot about the partner that you choose too. So if you are interested in more on that topic, um, I believe Lucas and Irina are coming up in two weeks. 
Um, so I'll put something out on Instagram about that and we're literally going to talk to them exactly about this topic. <laughs> so anyways, David, thank you so, so much for being with us today. Really, I have learned so much and I am so happy that we shared this time together. Thank you to Sarah. Thank you to oh. Anne. Thank you, Andres. Thank you, Fatou. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so, so, so much. Thank you, Molly. Thank you guys so much for being here and sharing your beautiful talents with us. You really are all so beautiful and incredible. And thank you for being open enough to try a new thing or two <laughs> in the day. I know that's hard. And this medium is not the best medium in the world, but at least we all get to be here together and make music. Um, just a quick note, again, like I said, Martina Arroyo is going to join us next week. If you guys are enjoying this programming and you want it to keep going all summer, please shoot us a small donation. We are not asking for you to pay for these classes. These are completely free. But if you do feel like you could give $5, $10, please click the link in the chat and shoot us a couple bucks and we promise we will continue giving you this fantastic content throughout the summer to keep you growing so that when you go back to school, when we go back to auditioning, when we go back to singing again, you have more knowledge and you've grown over this time rather than sat and watch Netflix for 10 hours, yeah? <laughs> The link is in the chat for the donations. If you can spare, if you cannot, please do not worry. We are not asking you to pay for these classes and we do not want to put anyone in any sort of situation where you feel uncomfortable. But if you can donate a few bucks, we would appreciate it very much. So, David, thank you so much. Mr. Thank Ryan, you. I don't know where you went to, but thank you so much for helping us run this wonderful class. Surely. Oh, thank you. you. Oh, thank you both so much. Thank, thank you, you, David, for being here. Thank you, Jennifer. And, and beautiful job, class. Sarah and Andres and, and, and Molly and Fatu. And Robert we'll have Molly. this class up on the website for all of you um, next week so that you can watch. Last week's class on vocal technique is up there now. Uh, so if you want to hear Melanie, who played today, which blew my mind if you want to hear her and some other fantastic singers that class is up on the website now and we'll have this class up for you next week so shall we sign off thank you yeah. everyone so much have thank a wonderful you. rest of your weekend <laughs> thank you bye everyone bye thank everyone you, thank, thank you. you guys thank you